Coming up this week on Movie Show Plus, Greg, we are at the Ski Company yeah, in Rochester. Yeah, great place. My goodness, I want to get back on skis. <laughs> We're here because the new movie opening this week is Downhill, mm -hmm. starring Will Ferrell, Julia Louise Dreyfus. You talked to them both. I did about the movie, and uh, it's very interesting. <laughs> very interesting. You also met a hedgehog this week. I did. A guy who I used to play his game growing up, and now I got to meet him for real. Sonic. Of course, we're talking about Sonic, and uh, we just, of course, also had the mm -hmm. Oscars. We're gonna talk all about what we thought of the Oscar yeah. uh, telecast, all the winners, all the losers, and more. All that coming up on Movie Show Plus. Get ready. Thank you so much for joining us on Movie Show Plus. I'm Tom Santilli. And I'm Greg Russell. We are here at The Ski Company mm -hmm. in Rochester. We're going to talk mm -hmm. all about the movie Downhill that stars yeah. Will Ferrell and Julia Louis-Dreyfus. Also Sonic the Hedgehog. That's right. A couple other movies opening this weekend. But first, we have to get into the Oscars. Uh, That's for sure. Last time we talked on our show, we were predicting the Oscars and kind of getting ready for them. Mm -hmm. Now that they've happened, Greg, what were your just overall thoughts on the Oscars this year. Oh, it's, it's kind of funny, Tom. Of course, a lot of things were predictable. Right. Best actor, best actress, best supporting actor, best supporting actress. Those are the four people who had been winning, you know, every yes. award show. Yeah, it was pretty much a shoe You kind of figured that. But really, the thing for best motion picture, and it was so funny, I was on actually a, a syndicated show mm -hmm. Sunday morning, and everybody, of course, we all thought it was gonna be, you know, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Yeah. Or maybe 1917. And I threw in the part, I said, but you know what? I have a funny feeling. Parasite all of a sudden is becoming this fast, you know, dark horse yeah. that could easily just go in and split right up the middle and it happened. I thought early on in the night when Ford v. Ferrari started winning some of the technical yeah. awards over 1917, that's when I started saying, well, you know what, I don't know if 1917 has enough momentum right. to go into this. The, the major surprise, of course, of the night, though, was not just that Parasite, I mean, that was a huge upset right. that it won Best Picture, but when they called Bong Joon-ho's name for Best Director, right. that was just, like, it floored everybody, and at that point, I feel like the Parasite fans were, were like, oh my oh, god, we, got we this have a baby. chance, <laughs> yeah, this, this could really happen. Uh, it, it's, of course, the only uh, foreign picture ever to win Best Picture. Right, right. And so, like you said, it was history made. So yeah, absolutely. It was good to see. Also, another fun part to watch last night was Detroit's own Eminem. Yes. Because remember when that first started out, we're all watching, and they're just playing the music. I'm thinking, okay, you know, when are they going to get into the song, or are they just going to do this part? Then when he appears on stage, yeah. it's like, all right. No, but uh, one more thing on Bong Joon-ho that I want to yeah. mention, too, is because I, I read about this afterward, mm -hmm. he is the first person to win four Oscars in the sing in a single night since Walt Disney. Wow. Yeah, so talk about a big night for Bong Joon-ho. So no wonder he was talking about, I'm going to drink until tomorrow. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I love that line. Now, now you mentioned, uh, you know, Chris Rock, Steve Martin off camera or on yeah. camera. Uh, what did you think of the whole hostless thing? I know last year was a big yeah. hit. This year, I feel like people thought maybe it was a little less uh, smooth this year. Right. What do you think? Yeah, it, it was one of those where um, we're kind of used to it now, yeah. you know, seeing it that way. Uh, I do miss the days of having somebody like Billy Crystal. Yeah. Or even going way back, like Johnny Carson or oh, something. Oh, yeah, you absolutely. Know, like Bob that. Hope. Right, and Bob Hope. Yeah. But uh, I guess they're, they just now have to find that one person, you know, who can yeah. just do it. And I think that was their fear. It's kind of like, we just don't want to put this person, man or woman, in there, and they just can't hold the show. So it's like, yeah. we'll just spread it around. <laughs> it's They're so desperate for ratings. As yeah. the ratings decline, I feel like they if, if you lock into a host, you're kind of locking into a one audience. Or one, right. you know, if you don't like that comedian or you know that isn't your brand of humor, you might be right. less inclined to want to watch it. I still say Detroit Tone, Keegan-Michael Key. That would be a great one. He would be. Or how about Maya Rudolph and Kristen Wiig? Who they were great. Fantastic. They Every were. Every time they're on television together, I think that would be a great, uh, great host. That pair. would. Um, now, overall, uh, did you, you know, we also spent the night at the from the Oscars at the Oscar Gala. That was so great. At the Maple Theater. And if you were there, I know you had a good time. <laughs> what a turnout. Uh, we had hundreds uh, of people, like over 200 people in the theater. Yeah. Uh, the swag bags went like this. We had a line out the door mm -hmm. as it started. Uh, just an amazing, amazing time there. Talk about the experience there. I was very surprised because, folks, um, on Oscar Sunday, it snowed. 
in the metro mm -hmm. Detroit area. And mm -hmm. I mean, snow. Mm -hmm. So I'm driving out there, and honest to goodness, in my mind, it's like, it's going to be me, Tom, Tom's <laughs> wife, uh, the manager of the theater, yeah. and a couple of kids who work there, all just sitting at the bar right. going, it would have been so good. Yeah. And like you said, I pulled up and I got to the parking lot and I'm looking at all these cars. I'm thinking maybe they're all at the supermarket, you know, next door buying salt. <laughs> I get to the door and the place, like you said, is just jam packed. So and it was like, well, you know what happened, just right? So great. You know what happened? What happened? Last year I was there by myself. Mm -hmm. This year, word got out that Greg Russell was going to be at the Oscar Gala. I think that's what happened, clearly. <laughs> I, I'll, we'll stick with that. We'll stick okay, with that. I'll go with that. <laughs> but it, it was a lot of fun. Met a lot of nice people. Yeah. And, um, Look forward to getting together with them again very soon. Like we said, once we take the show on the road, we'll just start getting the word out like a couple of weeks ahead of time where yeah. we're going to be. And we would love to see you out as part of Movie Show Plus. Yeah, we're just getting going here in 2020 and with our season four of Movie yeah. Show Plus. We're just getting started. And what a way to kick it off with this Oscars. Mm -hmm. Any other thoughts on the Oscars? Um, I like that they were able to include Kirk Douglas. Right, um, right. The other musical performances were pretty good. I could have done without seeing a Cats redo with uh, the two <laughs> actors that went up there, James Corden and well, well, Rebel that, Wilson. you got to figure that was probably the largest audience to see Cats. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <So>. Touche. <laughs> Boy, kick a, kick a cat when it's down. Huh? <laughs> when we come back on Movie Show Plus, we're going to go downhill with Greg Russell. That's right. You're going to hear my conversation with the stars of the movie. It's all downhill from here. Hey, Greg Russell here from Movie Show Plus, enjoying being here at the Foundation Hotel this week. We've been taking the show on the road quite a bit. Now, if you've got a business that you would like us to showcase, just let us know. Get in touch with us via our website right here, MovieShowPlus.com, and we'll get back with you. And hey, who knows? You might be the next movie star right here on Movie Show Plus. <laughs> Welcome to the Maple Cafe, located inside the Maple Theater. Featuring hot, fresh food made to order from the Pita Post. Great Lakes Coffee is back to serve your favorite hot or cold beverage. For more information, please visit themaplecafe.com. So welcome back to Movie Show mm -hmm. Plus. We're again here at the Ski Company in yeah. Rochester. Uh, just a wonderful retail store. It has Very all nice. kinds of stuff as you can see. There's skis, there's uh, coats and mittens and hats and snowboards and they do service. They do and helmets rentals. that we would need if we were going down the hill. Yeah, helmets and much more uh, preventative <laughs> material, yes. Uh, all kinds of stuff here at the ski company. We're gonna be talking with uh, some of the owners and some of the Great. staff here in a little yeah. bit and give you some more information about this place. But Greg, speaking of skiing, yes, there was a movie that comes out this week called Downhill, mm -hmm. and you got to talk to got some to of talk the to stars. the stars, as well as the, the directors, Will Ferrell and Julia Louis-Dreyfus, play husband and wife in this movie. And the title Downhill actually has kind of like two meanings. I mean, mm -hmm. Downhill, of course, going downhill uh, skiing, but then Downhill, when a mistake is made, yes, and it just snowballs. Yeah, uh, no pun intended. <laughs> that was right. great. You like see that. how he's a professional over here, ladies and gentlemen. There you go. Right now, here's my interview with the cast. Wunderbar. Oh, thank you. The hand in the hood. Arms up like this. Huh? Happy family. My ski. Please look into the camera. Please Why just smile. Die Stöcke vielleicht Do in die Höhe. He wants poles up again. He wants us to keep doing poles up. I don't know. Just been through a lot. Is all we have. All we have, yep. <sighs> Powerful. Maybe we ski the beast after lunch. Eat. I don't think I'm... it'll be that challenging. It'll be fine. Is that okay? Yeah, it's, it's fine. <laughs> It looked 
looked like it was going to kill us. For a and moment. the kids were screaming because it felt like we were going to die. Pete? Wow. And I look over at Pete, and he had grabbed his phone. Pete left us. It is one of the greatest elephant in the room mm -hmm. <laughs> movies yeah. Yeah. of all time, Yeah, I think. Right. Yeah. And this is the first time you guys have worked together, but you came across as the perfect couple. I think in terms of uh, delightfully sharing the same kind of approach to comedy yes. as mm -hmm. well as drama in this story, uh, mixed with the fact that we've both been married for a long time, mm -hmm. and yeah. to have uh, a, a lot to kind of share with each other and, and, and kind of draw, right. draw upon for, yeah. for the roles. Then you had two directors, and they're yes. both of their arguing, saying that you both like one of them better than the other. Right. Which one did you enjoy? Well... It's still a toss-up for me, and by toss-up, I mean neither. <laughs> <laughs> I, found them, toss down. I found them annoying and contradicting, and finally it was just... It basically, we just directed each we other. We directed the <laughs> movie. Yeah. I don't know what those guys did. Well, I mean, you know, they sort you of showed up. They were around, right. you know. To kind of... Yeah. Right, you got to give the title to somebody, so it's like, okay, yeah. you, <laughs> you've got <laughs> this. Right, right, right. And they're blah, 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 blah. It was, you know when the um, all the adults and Peanuts cartoons talk, and it's wah, 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 wah. Oh, that yes. was the sound of their voices to us. It's so true, literally. Yeah. yeah. Oh, jeez. Yeah. 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 Well, they hated Jim, so I <laughs> got to easy. speak with a lot of the I spent a lot of time in, in, a in the corner. closet. Yeah. <laughs> in the cor <laughs> Neither one of us can ski. Yeah. Oh, gosh. And so we would take the gondola up. Yeah. And then take the gondola back <laughs> <out. Which, laughs> We'd have soup. Uh -huh. And then we would come down. I don't understand why there weren't any warnings posted anywhere. There was a warning. What? Posted at lifts, gondolas, hotel receptions, restaurants, shops. Bars, soda machines, toilets. We didn't see any of that. Well. When we come back, more Movie Show Plus with my interviews from the new movie, Sonic the Hedgehog. And are any of these movies any good, Greg? I'll let you know in my reviews coming up. He's the expert. A Dream Limousine continues to be Metro Detroit's finest luxury transportation service. 734-542-6800. Offering late model luxury SUVs to brand new party buses that seat up to 34 passengers. 734-542-6800. Including the one-of-a-kind Escalade stretch with the exciting jet door. Call 734-542-6800. That's 734-542-6800. A Dream Limousine. The Maple Theater presents The Maple Cafe, a perfect place to host your next get-together. Great for corporate events, family gatherings, holiday parties, and more. Contact Ruth at themapletheater.com for more information. So, Mark, uh, thank you so much for having me out at your store here, the, the Ski Company in Rochester. Oh, thank you guys for coming out. Yeah, uh, so why don't you start off and just tell everybody, tell the viewers about your store. What is what, what do you have going on here? Well, we are a winter sports-specific store. We sell everything you need for winter sports, uh, skiing, snowboarding, uh, and all the equipment accessories that you need to do that. All right, and how long have you been doing this? Well, um, the store opened in the early 80s. Okay. Um, started working here shortly after that. Uh, wife and I took over ownership of it in the year 2000. So we've been a mom and pop shop since uh, 2000. So a family run business. You must have been an avid skier. Yes, yeah, that's kind of what got us into this. I love to ski growing up. So there's a lot of things that you guys do that are unique to your store. Like I know, for example, uh, Tell me a little bit maybe about the, the, the rental, the children's ski rental program that you guys do. Yeah, that's big for us. We uh, do a program, we call it a seasonal rental program for, for children uh, up to maybe age 14 to 15 years old okay. within reasonable size, uh, where you can actually rent a pair of skis, boots, bindings, everything you need to, for gear uh, for the whole season. You know, people, families start coming in in uh, late summer and fall, and uh, we set them up with equipment, and they use it all year long. Uh, bringing it back in the spring and uh, the, the fee is about 109 bucks to do that uh, so that's really huge for us we have upwards of 2,000 sets of those skis that go out wow. annually so uh, we, uh, we, we 
do a good job with that. So. And also another part of your business, uh, you know, beyond the, the retail and the skis mm -hmm. and even in the snowboards is uh, you guys do a lot of service. Yeah, that, that somewhat sets us apart from our competition. I'd say uh, we've always been known as uh, uh, strong in that area, customer service, uh, specialty services as well, uh, you know, boot fitting, uh, uh, actually maintaining and servicing skis, uh, specialize in that type of thing as well. So. And everybody too, you know, when uh, when we feature companies on our show, a lot of people like to get to know you guys a little bit, you know, on a, mm -hmm. on a personal level. Yeah. So you, you mentioned you own the, 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 the store with your wife. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's your guys kind of working relationship? Do you guys <laughs> have different tasks that you do? Like how do you guys handle things? Yeah, the uh, I'm, I'm more hands-on uh, sales floor servicing customers okay. uh, and my wife does a fair amount of that as well but she also does the buys all the beautiful clothes that okay. uh, that we have uh, that's a big job um, she also does the merchandising you know uh, she does an amazing job with that um, she also uh, takes care of office work things in the back you know those awesome. types of behind the scenes that are super important and she does a wonderful job with that i'm so fortunate to have her so what a team what a team yeah exactly. she describes you as a master boot fitter <laughs> is that uh it, it, without yeah. being modest uh, tell, tell me a little bit about that well you know ski boots aren't the most comfortable thing in the world so a lot of times they need servicing or from the start finding the right boot for that person mm -hmm. so um we People come seek us out if, if their feet hurt. Uh, they ask around, where can I go? Mm -hmm. And a lot of times they get sent here. So okay. So uh, we do uh, specialize in that. And you guys are right. I mean, you guys are right in the downtown. It's like, right, you guys are. You guys have an awesome location right here in downtown. Yeah, Rochester. yeah. We we love the location. They've done such a good job with uh, with the town as far as all the projects that they do. There's great parking now. Mm -hmm. uh, great restaurants. So you know, we encourage people to come down and check us out. And I know you guys run uh, sales too, kind of seasonal mm -hmm. sales, and yeah, there's still some yeah, things going on. Amazingly enough, it seems like it's midwinter, but uh, uh, it seems like uh, it, it's you know, it goes by pretty fast. So a lot of people go skiing in, in this state in February, and then they uh, in early into March. Uh, a lot of people, a lot of our customers also take trips, uh, say out out west or east, wherever sure. it might be. That's when they take their nice family trips. So they come see us for that as well. So I'm a non-skier myself. Uh, not that I wouldn't ski. I just really never had. I, I skied like one time in my life when I was young and didn't go very well. Mm -hmm. But skiing can be very, uh, you know, it can be very intimidating for That's people right. that don't. Mm -hmm do the sport mm -hmm. if i if a non-skier comes in here if a, a novice or a beginner comes into mm -hmm. the, the ski company um what you know is it a place where they're going to feel like welcome to come in here or should you kind of have some ski knowledge in order to mm -hmm. kind of yeah we have something for everybody here if okay. you're a brand new skier we can certainly take care of you at the very minimum we can educate you and maybe you go to the hill and you rent some equipment the first time mm -hmm. and see if you fall in love with it um, we can get you hooked up with the right people to give you some instruction at our local hills um, and then uh, get you set up with the right equipment that's going to make your experience wonderful great now where can people uh, find out about your company uh, you know other than coming into the store uh, where are you at on social media and things like that we have uh, the typical facebook instagram um, as well as our website okay um, you know we are www.skikoltd.com okay and if you just search ski shops in rochester you're going to find us so there's not that many shops around anymore um so we're pretty easy to find so once again greg we're here yeah. at the ski company in rochester mm -hmm. uh wonderful store we just talked it about downhill sure. uh but there's some other speed going on this weekend in the movie theaters uh, uh need for speed right another guy who also likes to ski yeah, sonic the hedgehog true. He's See a how we did that? Scared. See how we segued that around and connected those two movies <laughs> into one? He, he loves it himself, actually. He told me that. <laughs> oh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> we got to talk to James Marsden and also the voice of Sonic, Ben Schwartz. <laughs> Robotnik wants to control humanity with his machines. Sonic is a power that he needs to control the world. Is that all you got? No, but thank you for asking. Uh-oh, that's not good. Ah! I just thought you might like a latte with steamed Austrian goat milk. Of course I want a latte. I love the 
way you meant them. I think I'm kind of right in the zeitgeist with this character. Give me a big, fat break! The mustache was ridiculous. I wish I could grow it. Being able to do a movie that brings a good memory back and connects with new generations of people, it was really amazing. I've been very lucky in that regard. Nailed it! Blah, 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 blah. I'm just having so much fun. We've created a monster we won't be able to control. Little did you know back then, playing the game till 2, 3 in the morning, you'd be in the movie. Right, yeah. I mean, well, that's another reason why it was like, yes, sign me up, I want to be a part of this. It's like, you know, it's rare that you get an opportunity to, to uh, bring something to the big screen that, was, that has such mythology and such history and, and, and pop culture. Like, uh, X-Men was a really special thing for me to be a part of, and, and now to kind of bring this guy to the screen mm -hmm. is... Uh, is pretty cool too. And you're working with somebody who's blue again. So right, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's right. <laughs> See, boy, you were the first person to make me realize that. That's right. true. Yes, and he was also painted. There you go. But on a computer. <laughs> and then in this way, I mean, here you are. You're the sheriff in your hometown, growing up, or where you yeah. grew up. And like anybody, a lot of times you think it'd be great to move to some place bigger and all like that yeah. with your family. Yeah. He feels like there's more purpose out there, out there somewhere for him, and he, you know, he meets this guy yeah. along the way unexpectedly and becomes friends with him, mm -hmm. and and kind of like a father figure friend to him, mm -hmm. and discovers you know his uh, his new uh, definition of purpose that way. I'm quite sure you played it like everybody else. Yeah. Did. Could you have imagined then as a kid going, one day I'm going to be him? I mean, I never saw any of this coming, me being an actor or anything like mm -hmm. that. So to voice him and then to voice like Dewey from Ducktales and Leonardo from yeah. Turtles. It's a dream come true because those are the things I grew up with and like influenced who I am as a human being. And then, of course, you've got the big enemy. Always wonder what he'd look like in real life. Dr. Robotnik. Yep. Eggman. Jim yeah. Carrey. Yep. Yep. And he's, he's good as the evil bad guy. He's so funny in it. He, it made me so happy because I feel like it, that's like vintage Jim Carrey. Like the stuff that I grew up loving, like Dumb and Dumber and Ace Ventura, Ace Ventura to the Mask. And he does a performance like that and you're just blown away that he can be so funny by like moving his fingers. This is my power. And I'm using it to protect my friends. Let's go! Let's go! So, you're supposed to be Tom's best friend that he won't shut up about. Well, I don't see the appeal. That is very gross. Let's go. If you go into Downhill thinking it's going to be your average slapstick comedy because it stars Will Ferrell and Julia Louise Dreyfus, you may end up disappointed. That's because Downhill is actually more of a dark dramedy. It's the English language remake of the 2014 Swedish film Force Majeure, about a married couple who go on a ski vacation, but an avalanche literally nearly destroys their already fragile relationship. Julia Louise Dreyfus, who is a comedy goddess, rarely crosses over into films. The last time she did so was opposite the late James Gandolfini in 2013's Enough Said. And as she shows in that movie and in Downhill, she's very underrated as a dramatic actress as well. Farrell and Louise Dreyfus are pitch perfect in this quirky, offbeat movie, and it's a worthy remake of Force Majeure. But I think audiences will have a tough time knowing just what they're getting into. Regardless, I liked Downhill and its lean runtime of 86 minutes, and I give it a solid B. A horribly rendered version of Sonic the Hedgehog, revealed in an early trailer last summer, delayed the movie until now, where designers went back in and totally reanimated the famous Sega mascot. That made everybody super worried and cautious that this film was going to be a complete disaster. But, quite shockingly, I had a lot of fun with Sonic the Hedgehog, and I think it's a really clever, fun family film. It's helped out tremendously by Jim Carrey playing the villainous Dr. Robotnik, who seems to be right in the comedic wheelhouse that made him a household name in the first place. This is one for kids and adults alike, and I give Sonic the Hedgehog a B as well. Currently airing on HBO is a six-part documentary series called McMillions, a real-life crime story about how the McDonald's Monopoly game was rigged for over a decade. 
This series is populated by some amazing characters who add color and laughs to an otherwise unbelievable true story. I definitely urge you to check out McMillions, and here's a short clip. This is basically like your one shot to go undercover. Right, so I gotta do all the fun and not have to go through all the bull... Yeah, just make it happen. That's what it was. Hey, Matthews, just make it happen. I'm thinking to myself, one, my God, really? And then two is sweet. He wanted to be thrown into the lion's then, and he wouldn't have gotten it if the SAC did not feel he could handle himself. So they got some undercovers, you know, to act as a film crew. My name is Jan Garvin, and I was videographer when I answered his call, he said, you're gonna love this. Not, hey Jen, how's it going? Let's go, you know, how's it, you know, you're gonna love this. And after he explained what it was, it was like, okay, we can do this. And yeah, I'm gonna love it. Also new this week is the film, The Assistant. And you can find my full written review of this movie up on the website. Also in theaters this weekend is The Photograph, starring Lakeith Stanfield, Issa Rae, and Kelvin Harrison Jr. For more detailed reviews of these and other movies, please check me out on Rotten Tomatoes. You can go to the site, search the critics list to find Tom Santilli, and you can scroll through all of my recent and not so recent reviews. Another good way to find my stuff is to follow me on Twitter, at Tom Santilli, or go to the website, movieshowplus.com. Well, it's been wonderful, Greg. Uh, it here has been. At the Ski Company in Rochester this week. Uh, did you know that we can we go to all kinds of local businesses oh, that's for all sure. over the state of Michigan? Any any type of business that you may have, be it a restaurant, retail store, whatever, we would love to come out there, do our show from your location, and have fun. That's the most important Absolutely. thing. Absolutely. And, and of course, we would like to thank uh, the fine people at the Ski Company mm -hmm. here uh, for having us out today and then showing us around their store. Yeah. Uh, so cool. And Greg, thank you for the interviews. Oh, absolutely. It's always fun. You know that. Thank you for your, <laughs> your intel on the Oscars and your reaction. Uh, and make sure you guys tune yeah. in next time when we will be getting into all things movies, as we always do. Looking forward to it, and we look forward to seeing you. Check out MovieShowPlus.com to watch this episode online. And for exclusive content, extended interviews with Greg Russell, and a complete archive of movie reviews with Tom Santilli. Also, make sure to like and follow us on social media and on our Movie Show Plus YouTube channel. Any and all views and or opinions expressed by me, Tom Santilli, are fully my own and do not necessarily reflect the views and or opinions of Movie Show Plus, any other critic on the show, or anybody else associated with